Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at SimScape multi-body in Simulink, where you can create mechanical elements or you can bring them from uh, CAD software like SolidWorks and you can basically analyze the motion of them, analyze their forces, torques, everything. And the best of all, you can have an animation from which you can even make a video. Okay, so this environment is very powerful. And although in one of my videos, I showed how to export a model from, let's say, SolidWorks to Simscape, right, where it creates basically all of these members and connections and transforms and so on. But here, I want to show you a simple demo where we make everything here and we do not use a CAD software to go for a pendulum. And I want to show you the intricacies of a multi-body. The video I talked about is this one here under my MATLAB playlist. It's called MATLAB SimScape Multi-Body Linker for SolidWorks, okay? And I showed you in that video how to export a... Um, slider crank mechanism into uh, from SOLIDWORKS into uh, SimScape and uh, animate that, right? And uh, I have more talks about uh, SimScape in my uh, Simulink Intermediate and Advanced videos. But here, as I said, I want to specifically talk about the uh, multi-body and how to generate an object. Now, if you go to SimScape under multi-body, there are a bunch of different things you can do. There are belts and cables, body elements, constraints, right? For instance, you can have angle constraint, distance constraint. There are curves and surfaces, right? There are forces and torques, all different types of forces and torques, as you can see, transformations and frames, gears and couplings, all sorts of different joints, right? So something that you could do, for instance, in a software like Working Model or Visual NAS RAN or Microsoft Adams or something, here uh, you can do it here too, uh, MSC Adams, I'm sorry. And um, there are lots of things, utilities and so on. So uh, I want to show you how to do that. Now, the objects that you have, the graphics that you have under your control is limited really. So it's not really as easy as a CAD software to create an object because this is not really meant for that. But if you want, you can. So if you go under body elements, you see there are only a limited number of physical objects that are possible. You have a, a cube, a block, a cylinder, ellipsoid object, a, a graphics object uh, from solid this is where you can basically grab a solid object from elsewhere and this is when you export from solidworks the, you see this block and then uh, this revolve solid and spherical and so on but the one i want to show you is the extruded solid and for extruded solid what you can do is you can provide the profile of that extrusion in matlab you don't need to go to solidworks or anything so if you bring this extruded solid, which you see here, for instance, I have under pendulum, this one here, if I double click on it, you see that the cross section of this member, this kind of half disk, this one is provided by some variable in uh, MATLAB, by some graph, by some plot, and uh, it has this length T and so on, okay? And then from that, based on the density that you provide and the size and the thickness and everything, it can basically uh, get for you the inertia. If you click here, update, look, then it is going to get you the principal inertia, the product of inertia, the location of the center of mass and anything. And then on the graphics, you see here, the graphics is derived from geometry and then the visual properties like the color for instance, here the color is gray, but if you want, feel free, for instance, to change it to what? To blue, right? And if you say apply, you don't see the color updated right away. If you want to see update, you see here it shows you use F5. So if I use F5 on my keyboard, then it is going to show me the updated shape here, okay? Now, I wanted to explain what is this CS hole? What is this uh, cross-section Okay, and uh, the same thing here for this main block also, which is the other half. 
So what I have made here is a uh, pendulum, right, which is an elongated um, uh, circle, right? And there is a hole, and the way it is made is using two different solids, this part and then the other part that sits on the top of that. So you don't have negative objects in MATLAB, okay? You don't have like a cut extrude or something here. You have to break that object into a bunch of solids. So here we did it in two parts, and then we join them together. And uh, let me change the color of this one as well so it doesn't look weird, right? I guess it was this one that I picked. And um, there we go. And again, you can see that everything can be calculated for this one as well. So now, uh, let me first show you, you see the profile for this is called CS main. The other one is called uh, CS uh, hole. This one is CS main. Where are these? If you go to modeling here and go to model explorer, and then you click on this one called base workspace. If you click on the base workspace, it should bring all of the variables that you had. And this is what CS main, okay? Yes, you can see the CS main here, right? This is the variable for CS main. This is the variable for CS hole, okay? And uh, you can see all of the points that were used for them. You can see them in the um, uh, variable editor here. And the code that was used to create these variables is here. Okay, you can see it in MATLAB help, I got this block directly from MATLAB help. So if you look at MATLAB help, uh, here uh, some dimensions are provided like distance to distance from hole to hole. And then uh, we have the width of the link, the hole diameter, the thickness of the link. And you see, basically here I have straight lines and I have arcs. You see A sine and A cosine. So there are arcs of the uh, circle here uh, on one side and then on the other side because A and B are angles here, okay? So if you look, C of the left, C of the right, and C of the main are going to create what? The profile for the main solid for you and then this uh, other one, the C of the whole, as you can see clearly W over 2 cosine C and sine C Right, they are clearly going to create for you what the uh, whole part here, okay, and then connecting them together. So basically, what you need is a bunch of points on the circumference of these objects, connecting them together, and then what? Then um, once you have those points, from connecting these points and extruding it, it can give you the extruded objects that you don't normally have. So Look here, if I just copy this portion of the code and go to my MATLAB and paste it here, right? So now I have the CS hole, and if you look at it, it's 200 by 2. So if I go ahead and say plus what? CS hole, and then the first column, and then the second column, let's see what happens. You see that? Yeah, that's that cross-section. Of course, it has to connect these last two points together too, and it can, but once it connects these two points together, which it does in uh, extrusion, then you exactly have the cross-section of what? The cross-section of the um, uh, whole part, and then you can do a similar thing, but instead of CS whole, you say CS main, right? And if you see, that is going to be what the cross-section of the other object. Now, here you might not see it well, but if you say x is a square, x is um, equal, then you see the same aspect ratio, and here we go. You see that? Yeah? So again, if it connects this point to that point, that is the close profile of what? That is the close profile of the other piece. Okay? So you can have these, and... Um, once you have those points here, you can, from the workspace, you can pass them to your um, Simulink. And now, so you have this piece and this piece, and now you have to put them together. You have to assemble these two pieces together. 
How would you assemble pieces together? Using this rigid transform. So you bring this rigid transform. Where is that? This is under this um, frames and transform. Huh? Here, you can see it. It's called rigid transform. It has a rotation and a translation. And then you rotate and translate one of the blocks with respect to the other one so you can put them together. So here you see there is no rotation between them is needed. But if you want, you can rotate them with quaternions, with rotation matrix by aligning uh, two axes from one frame to another and so on, right? The only thing you see here is the translation. And the translation is done in the negative x-axis by distance L over 2. Remember, L was the distance from uh, center of the hole to, or L was the length of the member, actually. So in the negative x-axis, assuming that they are, uh, on the, uh, they are, their, their origins are on the top of each other, right? So um, one of them is, let me bring back these profiles again. So... Um, let me put this and then say hold on and then do the other one so I can see it better. Okay, and then say again x is equal. Uh, let me explain that for you here. Do you see? Look, this one and this one, they are both centered at origin. So if I want to assemble them, I have to grab this guy and in the negative x direction, I have to shift it by distance of L over 2, where L is the entire length of this. So if I bring this origin negative L over 2 to the left, then it comes all the way to the left side of this, and then you can assemble them together, right? So that uh, transformation here is needed to what is needed to put these two um, extrusions together, and now you can call that whole thing what? The pendulum, and it's a subsystem. If you look at demos in uh, MATLAB itself, it puts a mask over that, so you don't see underneath it, but if you want, you can. Here, deliberately, I didn't put a mask over that, so we can see it. And by the way, in subsystems of uh, SimEscape, you cannot use uh, this kind of um, input-output port. Let me show you. This is another thing you need to know, is when you bring a subsystem, look, the input-output ports are of this uh, format. They are like an ellipse, el ellipsoid shape. These are not the type of thing that you can use along with SimScape models. If you look at the input-output ports for them, they are kind of like a, a hexagon, okay? So for those kind of input-output ports, you have to bring them directly from the SimScape under utilities, they are not under uh, multi-body directly. They are under utilities of SIMS game, and you see it says connection port. So this is the type of thing that you need to bring. And if they are input ports, if you double click, the port location is on the left, but if they are output port, okay, if you want it to be output of a subsystem, then you need to what? You need to double click and change it to right side. Now, although they look the same, but they are not. This one you can rotate, and now this is what this is really an output port and this is what really an input port okay again if you don't do that look if you don't do that look what happens you see here i changed it so i have an extra input and an extra output but as i said if i make this guy also to be left look you're gonna get three input ports you see that so make sure that you change the output port uh, side to the right. And that's what I did here, okay? This one, if you look, this is on the left. This one, if you look, this is on the right side. Okay, so that is the pendulum. It's a, a, a elongated hole with a elongated uh, cylinder, uh, cylinder with a hole or a circle with a hole. And then this is my base object. Now, what is my base object? My base object, again, has two parts. One is the base frame. This base frame is an extrusion, but for extrusion, you don't need to necessarily what? You don't need to necessarily say uh, from the um, a, a sketch. If you want, you can go with a regular uh, polygon here. And here you see the regular is instead of a general thing where you provide the coordinates of the cross section, just like we did with those variables, CS whole and CS main, I say, give me a regular polygon, and then you provide the outer radius of the polygon, the number of sides, the thickness of the member, right? 
and again you can give it some specific density here it doesn't matter and density this is the, just the fixed part so the density of it does not change anything and then change the color of it and so on and so forth and now this is my member also i have this peg here and this is where uh, the this is where the whole of the uh, pendulum is going to be uh, mounted on it now i need to put these two parts also together i need to assemble them and the way they are assembled is you can see the only thing is needed is in the z direction 0.75 upward and where does 0.75 come from that comes from basically the thickness of this guy which is 0.5 and the length of this guy which is basically one so since the thickness of that member is a 0.5 the middle point of it is 0.25 from above and below the center of this guy is um, basically at the ground level so and the thickness of it is one so I need to what I need to shift this guy 0.75 above uh, the uh, bottom plane so it sits on the top of this if I don't shift it up then only what out of this one unit one centimeter length only 0.25 of that will stick out of that triangle and the rest of it will be inside the triangle so this is just lifting it up and putting it right on the top uh, face of this triangle here okay so that's all you need to do so now my base is set, my pendulum is set. I need to connect them together with a revolute joint. So I bring a revolute joint. Where is that? Here under, um, I showed you, this is under joints. There are all sorts of joints. The one I want is the revolute joint. So I grab a revolute joint here. And when you click on it, you need to uh, provide some information here. For instance, uh, here, if you click, you can provide your initial angle here, initial angular position. You can give it limits if you want it to not go more than so much limits. If you have mechanical limits, you can put it there. If you want to give it an external torque, you go under actuation and instead of none, you say provided by an input. You see now you get an input port for torque. And whatever you want to measure out of this uh, joint, you can go under sensing. What is it that you want to measure? Do you want to measure acceleration, velocity, position, or what? So let's say I want to measure position, okay? And once you okay that, now this one is going to give you the position, and this one is going to allow you to input torque. And that is exactly what I did to here. If you see, and initially I gave it 60 degree angle, so my pendulum is released from 60 degrees, no limits. The torque is provided by inputs. I want to measure the angular position, and... Here, this is what I have. So the other thing that you have to pay attention, there is a B and there is F on these uh, things. And B is the base side and F is the follower side. So this base side of this um, uh, revolute joint is connected to my base object and the follower part is connected to what? To the pendulum, okay? So don't reverse it. If you reverse this and put it like this and connect the follower to the fixed object and the base to the pendulum, the direction of motion is going to be backwards. So make sure you know which part is connect to base, which part is connect to follower. And here the torque is, of course, provided by a constant. And since this is a simulink block and this is a sim escape block, I have to use this block, which is called uh, basically the uh, Simulink to Simescape uh, Converter, which is again under Utilities here. That's this guy. It converts your Simulink signal to physical system. And then when I measure the angle, since again, this is a physical system and I need to show it on scope, I need to convert it into Simulink and I use this block, physical system to Simulink Converter, okay? The other thing I want to measure out of this, in addition to the angle, I want to measure the pin forces. So if you go back, you see I also ask it to give me some extra thing. What is that? So not only you can measure the motion, you can go under composite force and torque sensing. And here I check this one, constraint force. That is what these are the X and Y forces of the pin. Okay. Or if you want, you can measure the total force, for instance. But here I want to see the components. Okay, so I uh, say, give me the constraint forces. And of course, it has three components, X, Y, and Z. I use a demultiplexer. The Z should be zero, so I don't need it. 
and the only x and y are going to pass to a scope block. Okay, so now these blocks are all assembled, they are connected. Uh, the next thing I need to do, I need to position my support with respect to the word frame. The next block you need is this guy called the word frame, which does not do anything. This is just your reference for the motion. And again, if you go under multi-body, under frames, this is right here, a word frame. It has only one in output port. That is your reference. So here I fix the position of my uh, support object with respect to the word frame, again, through a... Um, rigid transformation and this time no translation is needed but rotation is needed what do i do i make sure that the z of my um, triangular object matches the negative y of the word frame and the y of that matches the positive x of the word frame so for the rotation method instead of a rotation matrix i use align axis which is one of the simplest way to align it and why would you do that? I'll show you in a second why we need to align the uh, positive Z of the triangular with the negative Y of the word frame. I'll show you in a second when we see the animation. There are two other blocks you need. One is the solver configuration, which basically tells you what kind of domain you are trying to solve. Okay. And then a bunch of other uh, things for tolerance and so on, delay, filling, uh, filtering time constant. Most of the time, you don't need to change anything in here. The only thing is bring it and connect it. And again, this is under what? This is under utilities of workspace here, solver configuration. The last thing you will need is this guy called mechanism configuration, which is under multi-body again. And under utilities of that, if you go, you see the mechanism configuration. If you bring it, this one will allow you to apply the gravity. Okay, so the gravity here is in the negative Z direction. Z is the upward of the word frame. So negative 9.81 or negative G is applied. If you want, you can put any other things in it. But really, the main thing of this mechanism is to apply gravity. You also connect that to the word frame and connect it to solver configuration. So now I got everything. Now I got everything and I provide the simulation time and look, I say run and look what happens. The best thing is the animation of this environment. There we go. See, and you can put it in isometric view. Okay, you put it in isometric view. If you want, you can see it in any other direction. If you want, you can break your view into different views, see the view direction from anywhere. If you want, you can see the centroids of the objects on them. If you want, you can put the uh, local and global frames on the objects, right? If you want, you can grab this and rotate it. If you want, you can pan it. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can zoom to fit. There are lots and lots of what options here for viewing the result. Okay, let me run it one more time. Now, of course, uh, the thing is it's gonna keep uh, bringing the new graphics onto the previous one. So it's better to close it and reopen it. Okay, so you see here, clearly the pendulum is moving. Now it's not a symmetric motion. Why? Because I have an external torque. If I keep this torque at constant zero and just let it oscillate under gravity and on from starting from 60 degrees, then you see a symmetric motion. You see, it's symmetric. And again, you can put it on isometric view. And now let me explain why we uh, did that alignment. So the reason is this. If you can see here, the z-axis of the word frame is upward. The y is uh, in the plane, in the uh, monitor, and x is to the right. But if you look at this um, uh, triangular block, you see that the z of this, which is the blue axis, okay, is originally if you don't transform it the z of this guy just like the word frame is going to be upward okay so basically this triangular flay, uh, frame is going to be flat with the z of it with the perpendicular vector of it pointing upward but that's not what you want you want to rotate it and put the back of it to the monitor frame let me put it back to the front view so you want the Z, which is right now out of the monitor, you want it to be like that. You don't want it like this Z to be facing upward. So what would you do? You force the Z axis, right? 
z of this guy to be the same as what? Negative y. Look, positive y is in the monitor, negative y is out of the monitor. So you force the z of that to be the negative y of the word frame. And the other one, I guess it was y and x, right? So you make the y of this um, follower to be what? Or this um, triangular member to be the x of the word frame. So you just rotate it and put the back of it to the monitor. And that's all you need to do. Okay, so by putting these frames on and seeing in isometric, you see really why those two rotations were done. Now, uh, not only you see the animation here, as I said, you can make a video and all you need is to click on here and say create a video, provide a speed ratio, a frame per rate, the kind of video format and the frame size. And once you click on create, from the simulation, it is going to create what? An animation video for you, which you can easily play it in media player or anywhere else you can add it to a PowerPoint. Look, and the good thing about it is all of those overlays that you had, you're not gonna see any of them. So it gives you a clean video like that. Okay, you see? So here is the animation and now here you can double click and monitor your theta. You see it started a little bit over one radians per second, which is 60 degrees. And these are your FX and FY forces. Okay, or if you want, you can combine them into F uh, total, which you could, and see the total uh, pin force if you want. Right, so it's extremely powerful. And remember, you did not specify a single line of code really. Uh, other than, of course, providing the profile of the extrusion, you did not write any differential equation. It figured it out by itself. It calculated all of the contact forces using the Lagrangian and so on, and it's extremely what? Uh, powerful here. Now, if you add this torque and make it big, like two units or so on, now this two is way bigger than the what it needs to overcome the gravity, so the angle should continuously increase instead of what? instead of oscillate you see here it is of course it's too fast but it is going around and you can see it here you see it is constantly increasing of course because the torque is more than the torque of the gravity and if you look at your contact forces they are getting bigger and it is expected because you get angular acceleration angular acceleration means angular velocity is getting bigger that means the, the uh, centripetal force is getting bigger, and that means your uh, pin forces are getting bigger. Okay, because pin forces have to provide the centripetal motion as well as what? The centripetal acceleration as well as to uh, cancel the gravity. So when omega gets bigger, these forces are getting bigger, as you can expect. Okay, so this was a uh, simple object but with all the explanations that you need to know about how to create multi-bodies with uh, sensors, with actuators from the joints, by uh, bringing these blocks, putting transformations between them to assemble them, and putting the gravity here, and uh, finally what? Measuring whatever you want to measure, do the animations, make a video, and so on and so forth. Hopefully the video was useful to you. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.